Hey trainers, Poke Dad here, and sadly I am without the dancing bear at first base, so I'm taking on this task solo. Um, and yeah, here on Pokemon Deck Check, I've got a deck profile of something that we've been working on for a little while. Um, we got news that uh, a really good deck, innovative deck from uh, Japan uh, this past weekend. It won a cup, and so we're able to convert it to uh, our standard. They have access to some of the new cards that we don't have, like, uh, for instance, Ditto, which is going to be a main uh, player going forward once it's released, I think, in almost every deck. It just makes everything so much more uh, versatile. But we're still able to use the same formula and duplicate the same success and let's hop into it. Zorak deck, we got four Zerua, four Zorak GX, three Lele, we've got two two Garbodor, two one Glissopod, one Tapicoco, and one uh, Rangaroo Resource Management. Um, we're extremely limited on our options for draw support, and so your safest bet is to play the nice consistency engine of Zorark. I mean, that's really, it, it's with the format right now, especially uh, fighting taking a little bit of a hit, and by hit, what we're factoring is, is they're probably not gonna be able to one-shot Zorak GX unless they sledgehammer with uh, you just having four prizes left so Outside of a four prize sledgehammer fighting isn't really gonna have a way to deal with Zorak other than like a, a dangerous rogue also or a claw slash but building three energies on uh a Lycan Rock is going to be tough unless you look towards playing the new Zygarde Lycan Rock idea, which plays DCE and then it's just two attachments. Special Energy is going to be a huge factor going forward. So any sort of special energy hate, like in the form of Drampa or Enhanced Hammer or some of the other cards, I think uh, Plumera uh, discards an energy. All those are going to be very, very valuable in this uh, format till we get the new set. So, like I said, we got the 4 4 Zork. We got three Lele. Um, like I said, we're limited on draw support, so when we do need a draw supporter, we've got the Lele to just go ahead and grab it. 2 2 Trash Lanch. This is going to be a powerhouse. Um, once again, you're going to hear me say this several times, but the draw support is just not where it needs to be. Uh, especially when setting up there's no more Bridget so people are gonna have to find a new engine and a lot of people are thinking apricorn maker is the way to go and there is an apricorn maker in this deck but it's based on the lily engine and you'll recognize the lily engine from uh, Kika uh, Peter Kika's Bulu list that ran lily instead of like the uh, traditional John Roberts list that ran Bridget so it's a winning formula. We know the formula works, and obviously with the, the Japanese cut player post in the deck, it's confirmed that this uh, Lily engine is going to be a recipe for success. But you're still gonna play a heavy count of uh, Nest Ball, Timer Ball, Mysterious Treasures, and of course the Ultra Ball. So Trash Land's gonna be really, really good in this format. It's gonna add up super, super quick. 2-1 Glisspod. Uh, this is going to be able to deal with Trash Lanch. It can one-shot it fairly easily, so that's why he's uh, really good. This second Wimpod should be a ditto, but like I said, it hasn't come out for us, uh, and it won't till I think, October or maybe even November it comes out. And so that would become ditto, and then you're able to use it as a third Trubbish, a fifth Zerua, or uh, the second Wimpod. So a lot of versatility, but for now, 2-1 on the Glissopod line. Coco, uh, free retreater. You gotta have a free retreater so you can move, 
switch in and it, and it helps Glyspod, obviously synergy there. It also helps up the numbers with Zork. When you can spread that 20, then he's able to hit, you know, 170 with a choice band with the uh, 20 spread, or he's able to get in uh, one shot range of the baby buzz walls and stuff like that. So, definitely, definitely good stuff with the Coco, mainly for free retreat. But he's also good to go in uh, early game, get some spread damage. It also helps set up the numbers with Glisspod. Uh, what a Ranguru. Resource management, you can, uh, it's our only form to get back uh, DCEs and and special energies and that sort of stuff. So, uh, and and uh, if Hoopa turns into be a thing, that it's looking like Hoopa may be played, uh, he, if you play smart, he can auto win you the Hoopa matchup. So, it's kind of sad that just one card can, you know, beat a fairly solid deck like Hoopa, but... It is what it is, so that's what we got for the uh, Pokemon line. Trash Lynch is definitely going to be uh, very good in this format because it is going to be extremely item dependent to uh, get set up. So, going into our items, we've got four Ultra, three Nest, two Choice Band. Two E Hammer, one Pal Pad, one Max Potion, one Rescue Stretcher, one Switch, one Fill Blower, one Mysterious Treasure, and one Body Building Dumbbells. A lot of one ofs, which um, we may end up uh, converting a little bit to a Macargo build since there's so many one ofs to be able to just grab it and then trade right into it. But for now, the engine works perfect. I mean, we're not really stressing about getting a max potion when we need it. We're not stressing about getting the body building dumbbells when we need it. So, the engine's solid. It's obviously it won the cup, so it's right on point. Four Ultra Ball, two Choice Band, uh, Switch. Uh, there's no Floatstone, folks. So, I mean, we've got to run Guzma, Switch, and then your free retreater with Coco. That at least gives you some options to uh, get out of the active. And then Palpad, nine times out of ten with Palpad, you're going to get back uh, your Guzmas and stuff. One Rescue Stretcher, uh, that way you can kind of uh, chain together some Trash Lanch or even Glispa, chain them together. Mysterious Treasure helps get out the Trash Lanch line or the Lele. So, I mean, you've got a lot of, a lot of good outs. Five outs, so you don't have a dead hand, plus the three Lele. So, you've got eight, eight ways to get out of a dead hand. Nest ball, you got a lot of Zeruas you need to get out. So uh, you're going to see Nest ball popping up in every single deck, I think. Bodybuilding dumbbells, it's, it's actually pretty good to throw on Glisspod, and all of a sudden it has 250 HP and it's weak to fire. Well, guess what? No one's playing fire. So that seems pretty good. And, you know, people are also probably going to cut down a field blower. And with the limited draw support, it's going to be tough to draw into them. So. A lot of times, bodybuilding dumbbells ends up sticking unless it's a Macargo build. So, uh, Enhanced Hammer is just so good right now in this format. DCs everywhere, Rainbow Energy, Unit Energy. Unit Energies are going to start showing up in every deck. A lot of different decks. So, that's what we got for items. <clears throat> do, 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 do. There we go. Let's hop into the support. Three Cynthia, three Lilybells, three Guzma, one Mallow, one Judge, one Acerola, one Apricorn. This, um, I was thinking about cutting this and then possibly uh, something else for a 1 1 Macargo line, but bench space can be an issue, especially if. Uh, with Coco on there, and then you want Zorarth and maybe Trashland. So, bench space is an issue. So, for now, no Macargo, but Apricorn Maker, I mean, that's really good to grab a couple Nest Balls or a couple Ultra Balls to thin down your hand and then Lily back up. That works really good, like the following turn or something. Um, three Guzma, that's your best way to switch in and out. And it's good in a Zorark deck because, I mean, that's not your. 
you know, you're basically using your draw supporter for the turn. Well, you got Zorak to draw. So, Guzma, really good. Cynthia, obviously the best draw support we have. Three Lily. Um, that's going to be your main engine to go. You're looking for a turn one Lily to get eight cards. Or at least draw seven. So, that's your best option. Uh, it will happen. Especially if you get a couple Ultra Balls or Nest Balls in your hand. It'll happen. Acerola again to help you move or to uh, get that Glyspot up, heal, and then put it back down on uh, another Wimpod that you might have in play or a Zork to heal it off. Really good card in correlation with the uh, Guzma and the One Switch and the Coco. So a lot of synergy. Good stuff. Uh, Judge, we don't really have a form of disruption. So, I mean, uh, we have to go with Judge. And then we can always pal pad it back. If need be, but I mean, that's all we got, folks. There's no in in the format. So, and then Mallow just always really, really good. I mean, we play a lot of one ofs, so Mallow to set up any of those one ofs we need and then draw into them. I mean, that's just it's awesome. No, I'm not gonna have talked enough on this channel about the greatness that is Mallow and how it's probably the most underrated supporter in the game with Zorak decks. Every Zorak deck should play Mellow. I mean, there's just... It's too good not to. I mean, who doesn't like grabbing any two cards out of their deck and putting it on top and then being able to draw? One Devoured Field, like I said, Mellow, we can grab it, we can hit the 130, so... I mean, that's mainly... It's mainly there for, like, uh, Baby Buzzwall, just so you can one-shot it in case you uh, don't get the cocoa or something like that. So, not much to say on that. Um, opposing supporter or opposing stadiums, you're probably looking at Altar of the Moon being the biggest threat uh, with the Malamar decks. But you are hitting them with weakness with the uh, Trash Lance. You are hitting them with weakness with the Zork. And they even struggle to uh, one-shot the Glissapod unless they load up four energies on a Necrozma. So... Um, for Rainbow, for DCE, Rainbow to help your Glisspod, Trash Lanch attack, it's, um, it's good throwing resource management, um, yeah, so good stuff, um, it is scary being completely 100% special energy dependent, because, uh, I think, um, I think Drampa and Enhanced Hammer and Sylveon are all going to be really good. And that's kind of a spoiler alert, teaser, sorry, spoiler alert. We've got a special Zorak deck that is all about uh, energy removal. It, it's kind of like uh, the Zoro control decks that we saw from the ARG. It, it's very similar to those. It runs the Macargo line. It runs Drampa and stuff like that. And it's 100% focused on destroying special energy in this heavy, heavy, heavy energy, uh, special energy reliant format. So, But deck's really good. Check it out. And uh, it's a winning formula. You know, everyone's stressing, should we play Lily Engine? Should we play Apricorn Maker? Well, the... Fortunately, the Japanese players have done all the heavy lifting. Uh, they basically instructed us to go the, the Lily route. That's the winning formula. And so in our testing, it's been 100% accurate. So that's what we're going to go with. I do like Apricorn Maker, just the one of in several decks. It just it seems really good, especially when you can grab two timer balls. Uh, and since we don't have Eva Soda, so that's kind of why I like it in some decks versus others. But yeah, try it out. And until next time, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.